I'm Shannon Skinner, and today I'm going to be speaking with Ruth Abernethy, who's a sculptor based west of Toronto. Ruth, thanks for being here today. My pleasure. You do such beautiful work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay, you. you're a sculptor. Um, tell us a little bit about, about your work. Well, I'm mostly known for large bronzes, portraits, and, and installations that are portraits plus other elements. People would assume that my, my work starts with Glenn Gould, but in fact, I think I was a sculptor long before I worked in bronze. Uh, I spent my first 20 years as a prop builder, re really from a professional summer job, uh, through uh, an introduction to the Stratford Festival, where I was for nearly 15 years. You always have figurative work that's part of a design, and good designers call on the talents in the shop. So from there, I was asked to do a, a set of figures that were repeated in bronze in 1997, 20 years ago this year. Tell us a little bit about the process of making these um, bronze heritage portraits. <laughs> my task, and I got introduced to the foundry because I could carve, which comes directly from my time in the prop shop. In essence, I wanted to, to figure out a way to carve a figure that gave me character and anatomy in one go. I mean, you can, do, you can do a nude, but it looks frozen or boring and my friends don't hang around with their clothes off. I want character, which is connected to my theater background. So it seemed ridiculous to wade into a huge chunk of styrene, hoping to find an elbow. So in fact, I worked out a method to map a, a figure with a particular gesture and a particular anatomy. From that, I had to learn to wax the surface of what I carved and then I take my originals to a foundry. There are a couple of spectacular Canadian foundries, and they do an exact replica in bronze. So you've um, you've created uh, portraits of a number of prime ministers, three, you? Uh, four, four, I think. Well, I've done John A. Macdonald twice. Okay. Once, presumably, as he might have looked at the age of 19, his first court appearance. That's picked in Ontario, Lake Ontario. Uh, shoreline, and then as an older statesman, as he would have looked at Confederation, 1867, and that's in Baden, Ontario, west of Toronto, but uh, at a heritage home called Castle Kilbride, and he will be one of all the Prime Ministers eventually going in there. I will do a few of them. I've also done Mackenzie King as a young man, as he sat in front of uh, KCI High School in Kitchener, that's where he attended, was an alumni. And I've also sculpted Lester B. Pierce in the head study, and he will be one of the Prime Minister's collection. And you are working on the Queen. I am working on the Queen. Yes, she's astonishing. I get to have tea with the Queen. A huge project, of course, commissioned for uh, Queen's Park in Toronto. She'll go at the west, at the front entrance on the west side of the walkway. Uh, life and a half, so large. Um, and she's sitting in the throne of Canada, which is actually an existing throne in the Red Chamber in Ottawa, which is thoroughly documented, and it will be spectacular in bronze. I mean, it's a beautiful chair, very human scale, not auspicious. Uh, only the Queen or her substitute, the Governor General, can sit in the chair. But uh, in, at 12 feet tall in bronze, it's going to be a knockout. Hey, well, Matt's going to be amazing. And, and when is that launched? Sometime in 2017. The pieces are at the foundry now, and I'm nearly finished the, the original sculpture of her. And what's interesting is you've actually met her. She was here for the unveiling of yes. your Oscar Peterson yes. portrait. 2010 right. at the National Arts Centre. And the Queen happened to be on a visit and, and uh, for, for a happy circumstance, uh, our event was added to her agenda just in the months prior to the visit. And she was impressed with your work? She was fabulous. Mm. Oh my goodness. I mean, it's, it's hard to describe the uh, intensity that she brings to something and the focus. I mean, she really is interested in what you're doing. In fact, she turned to me and asked how I do such wonderful metal work, at which point we all cracked up because I don't do the metal work. I hired that done. And I said to her, well, that's the point at which you, you don't have to be an expert, but you do have to know one. <laughs> and then she did her walkabout, and Philip came back to ask, because they really did want to know how it gets made. And so I was pleased to be able to take a few more sentences to describe, because the, the bronzing process is incredibly complicated. This work can last 10,000 years, yeah. long after we're gone. Yes. Your work can yes. and be in, found it, on planet Earth. Yes. This is, this is just like us examining or wondering about the bronzes that, that have been dug up in the Bronze Age, the Romans, the Greeks, any number of cultures, of course, working in bronze. I mean, it's a record of what they valued, and it's also a record of them as individuals choosing to do this project, or this de depict this person or that. And, uh. It's nearly a lost art. I mean, you don't see a lot of bronze 
sculptures um, anymore? Is it is it nearly lost, or is it very? I few can't make comparison. <laughs> I won't live long enough to really have uh, a comparison to make. I don't know that bronzes were ever done in such vast numbers. I think we need to be mindful of the fact that at one point such structures were the equivalent of IMAX. You know, we have, we have thousands of other ways now of distracting ourselves, and bronzes maybe don't have the same uh, impact as they would have had for peasants in some, you know, centuries past. And one thing I did want to mention, there was um, a project that you worked on that uh, got international uh, attention, particularly on social media, uh, and that was one of a young boy named Jeffrey Baldwin. Yeah. Yeah, unique and quite unlike other projects for reasons that it was crowdfunded, uh, done privately by an individual in Ottawa whose, whose son was the same age, shared a birthday with, with Jeffrey Baldwin, who died in foster care. It was tragic and when the inquest came up after the fact, it was back in the public eye all over again and it was an astonishing display of empathy. Uh, I had phone calls from all over the place. Some of the issue was just his tragic death because it was at the hands of his own grandparents. The second part was that as part of the public art process, uh, the sponsor had to get permission from DC Comics to use the Superman logo that appears on the front of the costume that he was wearing. And because of the association with child abuse, DC initially said, oh no, we're, you know, we're, we're not going to support. And, and then the public outcry was deafening. And in 48 hours, they had reversed the decision and offered their approval. Now you have a book out. This is I new. Do. Tell yes. us about your book. Well, it was an interesting project because books and working with graphics, it's a very flat exercise uh, and, and an effort for me. But yes, I have a book. I had a spectacular team and, and a client who, who wanted a summary of two decades of work. So it's a coffee table book. What was it called? Life in Bronze, a Sculptor's Journal. In my view and in my life, Life and bronze happen hand in hand. I have a family, I have two sons, I built our own house. Uh, I, I'm not willing to give up life to be an artist. And to me, that's, the two are intrinsically linked. But yes, I have a book, uh, nearly 200 pages, all kinds of photographs. And I've written the narrative myself because I think there are a lot of wonderful stories around the making of any of these projects. Some of it is honoring clients. Some of it is just a means of sharing really interesting projects, literally from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Now, over 20 years, there's probably 30 good-sized bronzes in there, uh, some in the States, some overseas, and uh, just, to, just to share what I've done, because there's a lot of isolation in the studio, and, and most projects don't cross-pollinate. I'm the repeating factor, but the other groups never know about each other. And where can people get your book? Orderable through chapters uh, and indigo, I think, across the country. Some Coles in key places, uh, certainly in the catalog for Granville Island Publishing in Vancouver. Um, and quite a, quite a number of independents, actually, because wherever I have projects, there are usually independent bookstores. So watch for it. But yes, easily found online, I think, and orderable. Well, thank you, Ruth. Uh, one last question. Um, what would be your top success tip for somebody who's watching, who might be wa walking in your shoes, who's interested in becoming a sculptor and living the life that you live? What would be one piece of advice that you can offer someone? Be professional. You know, really just uh, good communications. Uh, beware displaying all kinds of disappointment. You know, show up. I think Elizabeth Gilbert said it very well. You know, uh, never assume that your best work is behind you. Sharpen your pencil and show up. <laughs> Love it. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story and your journey, and I wish you all the best, and, and I can't wait to see the Queen. <laughs> Stay tuned. Thank you.